Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Southern Royal Albatross, among the largest of their group, with wingspans exceeding 3 metres. I hope you enjoy. Alongside the wandering albatross, Southern Royal Albatrosses are among the largest living flying birds, with them having lengths of 112 through 123 centimetres, weights of up to 8.5 kilograms and wingspans ranging from 2.9 to 3.5 metres. They are closely related to the similarly named Northern Royal Albatross, which they were once considered conspecific with. The split in their taxonomy is however not universally accepted, and some simply refer to both of them as the Royal Albatross, although differences in their wings, coloration and beaks leads to them still being considered distinct. They range along the southern oceans concentrating on the western east coast of southern South America, as well as around New Zealand. The majority of their range consists of subantarctic islands in and around 30 and 45 degrees south, with the majority of their population breeding and nesting on Campbell Island, with there being an estimated 8,600 pairs. They have also interestingly been recorded breeding and hybridising with northern royal albatrosses on the Otago Peninsula colony. Like other related birds, they are monogamous, with long-term partnerships, although a small proportion have been known to divorce. They become mature at around 6 to 12 years of age, with a breeding pattern being biennial, occurring once every two years due to them taking a year to raise their single chick. Their single egg is laid in November through December, with the chicks hatching in February and then fledging in October. Non-breeding birds and juveniles cross the southern ocean to feed in South American waters, before returning to their breeding areas, with them being able to live well into their forties. Birds were severely depleted on Campbell Island when sheep farming on the island from 1890 to 1931 was prevalent, with the burning of vegetation, grazing and direct predation by pests and the occasional farm dog, all contributing to their decline. Once they became protected in the 50s and 60s, and introduced mammals were removed, they managed to recover, although said recovery appears to have levelled off during the early 2000s. Given their size, they have few predators, although longline fishing continues to be a major problem for them, with a population of around 28,000 birds not having the fastest recovery time. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Beer of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Diefenbach's Rail, extinct, just smiling birds that's disappeared soon after their discovery. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's may be.